My name is Sam Wagner. This is an interview that I granted to Nova Macedonia, a daily paper in the Republic of Macedonia, on March 10, 2014. Question. Russia is one of the main sources of energy, natural gas, for Europe, and the Russian market is one of the biggest export markets for the European Union. Additionally, the United States have exports in Russia and imports uh, uh, commodities and goods worth billions. Do you think NATO countries will risk the economic benefits by military action in Ukraine? My response? No, I do not. But not for economic reasons. The entire economy of Russia is equal nearly to the economy of Italy. The Russian economy is also mainly oil and minerals based, not really industrial. Europe gets 31% of its energy needs from Russia. Germany has a dedicated Russian natural gas pipeline, which does not cross Ukrainian territory. But the other members of the European Union depend on safe transit of carbohydrates via Ukraine. Still, these energy needs, which, again, are limited to 31% of total consumption, can be supplanted by natural gas from North Africa and even from the United States. Certain European financial institutions are exposed to Russian and Ukrainian loans, but their exposure is far from dangerous. 25 billion are owed to Austrian banks, which is equal to 5.6% of their foreign portfolio. 34.5 billion are owed to Italian banks, which is equal to 4.1% of their portfolio, and 52.4 billion to French banks, 1.9% respectively. That's not a lot. Question. Do you think that NATO countries could block the trade arrangements with Russia? My response, yes, they can and they will. If Putin doesn't back down, that's what's going to happen. It is just about the only effective sanction they have on a state-to-state -state level. But these export arrangements benefit Russia much more than they benefit the European Union. The USA has a trade deficit with Russia. If it imports twice as much as it exports. Only Russia stands to lose from such an eventual embargo. Question number three. Since the crisis began, the value of the Russian ruble fell 2.5% against the dollar and 1.5% against the euro to 50.30. Can you explain why the ruble is falling? My response, mainly because Russians, oligarchs, foreign investors, are selling rubles in order to purchase foreign exchange and then smuggle the proceeds out of the country. The Central Bank of Russia has had to buy $10 billion worth of rubles in a single day last week to protect the currency. It has also raised interest rates by 1.5% to render the ruble more attractive. And how will this affect the trade relations between the East and the West? asks Nova Macedonia. My response? Nothing very serious. Russia is the world's largest energy and minerals producer. It cannot afford to not sell oil, to not sell natural gas, and to not sell its extractive minerals to its customers, because then its economy will collapse and crash. It manufactures little else that is exportable. It is a hostage to its own economic monoculture and its own addiction to oil's easy and fast profits. Finally, Nova Macedonia asks, what does this mean when it comes to global, the global currency battle? My response, if a real crisis erupts, for instance, if Putin invades eastern Ukraine, the main beneficiaries will be the Asian currencies. Both the euro and the dollar will suffer mildly and then recover. The euro, because of the short-term and limited economic European implications of an all-out conflict, and the United States dollar, because of the United States involvement, in yet another destabilizing event. The USD dollar used to be a refuge currency, a shelter currency where people invest when geopolitics heats up. Now the dollar is merely the currency of a teetering empire on the brink and an empire which keeps getting involved in wars and conflicts, often of its own making and to its own detriment.